This is one of SpaceX's new concept renders for a Mars mission. When you look at it, have you ever wondered how the Optimus robot is supposed to get out through that tiny sliding door? And it's not just about the robot. In the future, Starship will need to deploy much larger payloads for a wide range of missions. That means a different deployment system will be necessary. So, how's that going to be like? First, let's take a look at how Starship is currently designed to deploy payloads. The Starship payload bay contains several important components, including the nosicone, header tanks, forward flaps, and the payload deployment system, known as the PEZ dispenser. Inside, there are also several COPVs, or composite overwrapped pressure vessels, placed around the methane header tank to supply startup gas for the engines. Twelve more are located at the base of the bay. These tanks were recently involved in a catastrophic test explosion, but we won't focus on that now. As mentioned, the main topic here is the payload deployment system, the so-called PEZ dispenser. The PEZ dispenser is a system designed specifically to deploy Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. It was first introduced on Ship 24, although the door remained sealed until the third flight. It is called the PEZ dispenser because it works similarly to the candy toy, pushing out one rectangular satellite at a time through a small opening. This system uses a sliding side door on Starship. It is not a large door, but it does not need to be. The satellites are stacked in a way that allows them to slide out smoothly, similar to how letters drop through a mail slot. The dispenser is mounted directly to the forward dome, and the door is opened using pistons that pull it upward. As it opens, the panel tilts inward slightly. The satellites are not simply released by gravity. The system actively pushes them out using a mobile track mounted on a truss base. Once a satellite is deployed, the next one is lowered into place and then released. During loading, the process works in reverse, lifting each satellite to make space for the next. To prevent satellites from drifting out in zero gravity, a retention frame holds them in place. This frame lowers alongside the satellites during deployment and ensures they stay properly aligned. Around the door, a series of double plates reinforces the structure to handle stress and maintain strength. You can think of it like a window in a house. The glass does not hold up the wall, but the frame around it does. In the same way, the door panel is not load-bearing, but the structure around it keeps everything stable. Since the payload bay is not pressurized, whether the door is open or closed does not affect the overall strength of the vehicle. So that is how the current Starship deployment system is supposed to work. Unfortunately, we have not yet seen it in action. The closest we got was during Flight 9, when the Block 2 ship made it past second engine cutoff but failed to fully open the payload door. It got stuck about halfway and never completed the deployment sequence. We still do not know the exact cause of the failure. One possibility is that metal structures, which are assembled under Earth's gravity, might shift slightly once they reach microgravity. That small change can affect how parts fit together. Something that moved freely on the ground could become too tight to move in space. Another possibility is thermal stress. One side of the vehicle may be exposed to direct sunlight, while the other remains in shadow, causing parts to expand or contract unevenly. Or maybe it is the trade-off of engineering. To make something as complex as a full-flow staged combustion engine work, perhaps the cost was a simple functioning door, who knows? Either way, in spaceflight, even something as seemingly basic as a door often does not work perfectly the first time. The good news is that SpaceX is known for rapid iteration. It is very likely they will fix the issue quickly. For now, the reason they are using this specific deployment system is that the first few flights of Starship are only meant to carry the company's own Starlink satellites. Starship's significantly greater payload capacity compared to Falcon 9 will transform the deployment of Starlink satellites with the ability to deliver up to 100 tons or more to low Earth orbit, which is approximately 4.4 times more than Falcon 9. Starship can launch many more satellites in a single mission. 
This increase in capacity will dramatically improve deployment efficiency, enabling SpaceX to expand the Starlink constellation at a much faster pace. As a result, global broadband internet coverage will be achieved more rapidly, advancing SpaceX's mission to connect the world. But as the mission types grow more complex, SpaceX will develop new deployment systems suited for larger and more diverse payloads. To achieve this, most modern orbital launchers, like SpaceX's Falcon 9, place their payloads at the front of the rocket under a protective fairing. These fairings split in half and are ejected once the vehicle reaches space, exposing the payload for deployment. But with Starship, the goal is full reusability, so ejecting fairings is not an option. The vehicle needs that protective outer shell intact for re-entry and landing. Enter the clamshell concept. This was one of the earlier designs for Starship's payload bay. In historical renderings, from when Starship was still called the BFR, the vehicle featured a large clamshell-like door system, sometimes nicknamed the Chomper. This design resembled the Space Shuttle's payload bay and was capable of opening wide to accommodate large or bulky cargo such as satellites or station modules. In this setup, the payload is integrated inside the clamshell structure. The fairing remains closed through ascent, keeping the payload protected. When it is time for deployment, the clamshell doors open and the payload adapter tilts the payload outward at an angle to prepare for separation. The payload is then released using a mission-specific adapter. If the mission carries multiple satellites, a rotating mechanism can be used to position each one for safe deployment with maximum clearance. Once all payloads have been deployed and have cleared the area, the clamshell doors close again to prepare Starship for its return to Earth. So with this new deploy system, according to SpaceX's official Starship user guide, satellite customers have several options when booking a mission. They can fly a single spacecraft, organize their own rideshare for one Starship launch, or collaborate with SpaceX on a multi-manifest mission. This flexibility allows customers to tailor their mission according to their payload size, budget, and schedule. Thanks to the unique size and geometry of Starship's payload bay, new possibilities open up for payload integration. For spacecraft that require extra structural support, Starship can install mounting points along the sidewalls or inside the nose. These support systems are designed to work with Trunnion-style interfaces, similar to those used on NASA's Space Shuttle. When multiple large payloads are launched together, they are typically arranged side by side on the payload adapter. This layout helps minimize technical and scheduling conflicts between rideshare customers, unlike traditional stacked configurations that can be more complex and interdependent. To streamline operations, Starship will include built-in power and data interfaces that match common industry standards. This eliminates the need for customers to bring their own electrical ground support equipment during the final stages of launch preparation. Payloads will be able to receive power, monitoring, and command signals even after they are sealed inside the fairing, both while in the processing facility and on the launch pad. In some cases, these connections may even remain active during flight. SpaceX is expected to develop multiple Starship variants, each tailored to specific mission types. For example, the HLS, Human Landing System variant, which is designed specifically for NASA's Artemis lunar missions. The HLS variant incorporates several mission-specific modifications. In addition to the standard clamshell payload doors, it features a large external elevator designed to transport astronauts and equipment from the crew cabin. Located high in the spacecraft's nose, approximately 30 to 50 meters above the lunar surface, down to the moon. This elevator system accommodates the moon's one-sixth gravity and must meet NASA requirements to carry at least two fully suited astronauts plus cargo with the durability to support multiple round trips per mission. Upon descent, astronauts step directly from the elevator platform onto the lunar regolith. The elevator is also designed to deliver rovers, scientific instruments, or other surface payloads to support extended lunar operations. In June 2024, this concept was put to the test when astronauts Peggy Whitson, Axiom Space, and Doug Wheelock, NASA, participated 
in a full-scale systems integration test at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, wearing prototype Axiom spacesuits and mock-ups of the portable life support system, PLSS backpacks, the astronauts evaluated the layout and functionality of Starship's airlock and elevator. The three-hour test was the most comprehensive of its kind since the Apollo era. It verified that the airlock and elevator systems could accommodate suited astronauts and allow for essential mission operations. The astronauts interacted with control panels to ensure they were operable while gloved and practiced boarding and riding the elevator, simulating egress and ingress procedures. The test also provided valuable feedback on the fit, mobility, and usability of the Axiom suits, with particular focus on how easily astronauts could maneuver and stow the suits with minimal external assistance. If the system performs well on the moon, it's likely SpaceX will adopt a similar deployment approach for Mars missions. Elon Musk has suggested there's a 50% chance the first mission to Mars could happen as early as next year. However, I don't think there's any need for SpaceX to rush the development of the clamshell payload door just yet. The initial phase of Mars exploration is focused on proving that we can even reach the planet in the first place. SpaceX plans to launch around five uncrewed starships during this phase. These early missions are all about maximizing learning, testing, and validating the critical technologies required for interplanetary travel, entry, descent, and landing on the Martian surface. At this stage, there likely won't be many high-priority payloads to deploy. There's also a real possibility that none of the starships will stick the landing perfectly. The goal is data collection, not flawless execution. Once SpaceX has gathered enough data and demonstrated consistent landings, the next phase will focus on laying the groundwork for a future human presence. This will involve additional landers delivering larger payloads, around 20 tons each, including early infrastructure components. These missions will be crucial for confirming the availability of local resources, such as water ice, and for preparing designated landing zones for future crewed missions. Equipment deployed during this phase will support both initial surface operations and long-term planning. That is when the clamshell door becomes important, as there will be a real need to deploy heavy equipment and cargo to the surface. By that time, SpaceX will likely have gained significant experience from using the clamshell system on the moon, particularly with the HLS variant of Starship. Nonetheless, what SpaceX needs to focus on right now is flying Starship to orbit and bringing it back successfully, as well as ensuring that the PEZ dispenser payload deployment system works flawlessly. For now, the primary focus remains on Starlink deployment. However, the rocket's massive payload capacity, ranging from 100 to 300 tons to orbit, means it will be well-suited for larger and more complex missions with future modifications.